that was really offensive. A couple days ago, I had a complete meltdown because my weight was back down to the 80s. I had finally gotten up to 97 pounds and it took practically a full year. And then I get back down to 89 in a matter of just a couple weeks. And I cried and cried and cried and set myself into a huge reaction from crying because if you guys know with mast cell disease too much of anything will cause the suckers to degranulate it doesn't matter if it's too happy too excited too sad too anxious it can cause a reaction so my gi doctor had sent in the orders to the home health pharmacy to start the tpn so we can see give me some gut rest well, at the hospital, the last time I was on TPN, they almost had a call code. The past few times on TPN, it just has not been well. But I didn't know that I had problems with the IV bags, with various like PVC, plastics, and DHP that come in the IV bags. We were thinking that may have been like a huge culprit as to why I didn't do well with the TPN. This last few times because we didn't we weren't aware of that yet all the hospitals around use Baxter products and so the home health pharmacist was doing her research to try to figure out how to safely make TPN for me and she saw that a lot of the Baxter products that you use to make TPN have the exact plastics that I'm known to react to so instead of Baxter she asked for a drop shipment of B Braun products which I normally do safe with as far as their saline and that sort of thing. Well, we were going to trial introducing one component of TPN at a time. We started the dextrose and plain saline and that went okay. Like I didn't have any issues. We did it three or four times. And it was also good to give me the extra calories because I'm not getting but eight to nine hundred calories a day for the last few weeks but that being said after this dextrose went well we were going to incorporate the dextrose with the sterile water which is basically what makes tpn apparently it's not safe due to the osmolarity or yada 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 i don't even know i'm not a pharmacist so they introduced b bronze sterile water and i got 20 mils into it and started reacting and that was very disheartening because we were not expecting that at all. We thought the Braun products were safe. What is going on here? Then the pharmacist and my mom and myself start doing some research. On the label, it says that there is aluminum in their sterile water. My pharmacist from years back in Florida had considered the aluminum content in the trace elements of TPN that were a problem, but we were not aware that there is aluminum in the sterile water that is used to make it. Of course, after I fail the TPN trial, that's when I get on the scale and notice it in the 80s and I just have a complete meltdown. So that has been my life and I've just been very weak. I am having a lot of issues neurologically with tremors and my muscles and I cannot pee and release my bladder. My small intestine is not working. So in between, all, all of this started before I even was in a nutritional crisis, so to speak. So now all of these symptoms that I was feeling before have just worsened and we don't know what to do about it. We are considering trying to make the TPN without the sterile water but that is probably not going to be safe long term and we don't know because we are unable to talk to the pharmacists right now because they are all out with the cootie bugs. 
So hopefully they feel better soon and all feel better soon and all will be well. Cheyenne gets her wheelchair today. Yay! Yeah. I think that might be smaller than my other one. Uh-huh. Sit in it. See? Oh yeah, she's yeah. dialing out. <laughs> it's definitely more comfortable. Well, that's good. What? I've lost 10 pounds since we were bed. Oh, you, <laughs> you didn't have 10 pounds to live. Yeah, yeah for no. sure. I haven't lost 10 pounds. <laughs> Did you get Cheyenne's? I know I, I've actually lost a few. Uh, I want to just take a chunk off here. Chunk off here. All right. Okay, this, so where would we put this? Um, you could probably hang it off the back here. I was finally able to get my new wheelchair. I already had a tie light wheelchair. It was the tie light Aero R, but we ordered it totally out of pocket because my insurance was not going to cover it. They were going to make me pay the first sixteen hundred, and then they were only going to cover like hardly anything after that. So I also couldn't leave the hospital since I was admitted at the time constantly to be able to go get it fitted. So my dad took the measurements and we sent it in online and I got the wheelchair and it turned out pretty good. It like fit me good. The only issue is with the adjustment since I don't weigh very much and when I have a backpack on the back of it, it kind of wants to flip over. Uh, but back, stuff has changed with the insurance here. and now they're covering. Uh, so so I got a new one that specifically measured for me i went to the place to get it and the insurance covered all of it thank god that is a blessing so far i like it the seat is a thousand times more comfortable and the wheels are set further back than normal to help with the weight distribution issue so i don't flip over the only thing that i do not like about it is that the handles don't come up so if I ever need someone to push me, they're going to have to really bend down low. But other than that, it's perfect. What are you doing? What are you doing? Dude, how did you get up there? I don't know what he's doing, but he definitely shouldn't be up there. I'm like trailing a feral bag. I'm just like walking with the attached. You know it's gonna be a good day when you wake up like this. I'm not sure what has me so set off. Um, so yesterday I made an appointment with a specialist to go over some results from when they found cerebral folate deficiency diagnosed through my lumbar puncture. Now CFD is basically a neurological condition where the folate will be normal through the blood, but when the levels are tested in the cerebral spinal fluid, they're very low. I'll go into more about like why maybe next week once I make my final decision on if I'm truly gonna go. Tubes hold me. Where was I? Um, yeah, so CFD is a neurological condition and the low levels of folate in the cerebral spinal fluid start impacting the neurotransmitters and it causes a lot of muscular symptoms, seizures, etc. Now there is a treatment, but none of the doctors really understood it. So that's why I was being sent to the specialist. It's usually caused by like mitochondrial disease, so the specialist would look into that as well. When I first called to schedule the appointment, I was informed that there is a, an essential oil diffuser that could potentially be a problem with my mast cell disease causing me to react to all those things. So I did schedule the appointment and later I called back, the patient coordinator answered and I was trying to see if A, we could either do this as a remote appointment via telephone or Skype or something or if I had needed to have my mom drive the two hours to the office to kind of scope it out and to see if she thinks I would be able to tolerate it. 
because obviously being there in person for a physical exam is more like beneficial to, so the doctor can fully grasp what is going on. When I called, the man was just going on like, yada yada yada, I can't tell you that, blah 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 blah. Are you just going to be anxious and start reacting because you know the diffuser's there, blah 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 blah. That was really offensive because he's just claiming that I am anxious. And so I am debating on whether or not I even want to go to see that specialist now, being that I got that kind of response. So I was considering sending an email saying, I'm not sure you guys understand the situation. It'll be such a blessing to have Dr. So-and-so's expertise in this, but I'm on a continuous Benadryl infusion because they're not aware of that yet. And that type of thing, and this is really serious. It's not just me being anxious and afraid that I'm gonna react to every scent that I come across. And it's just very infuriating that patients are seen that way and when there's an underlying medical condition that they cannot understand, the first assumption they want to make is that you're anxious. And then the Grey's Anatomy episode last night, whoever saw that, was just basically the epitome of that situation where there was a true medical condition going on and the doctor just totally blamed mental illness for the physical symptoms. That could have been deadly without treatment. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in regards to my appointment. And I know that just because the person that answered the phone was like, that doesn't mean that the doctor is going to hold the same opinion because there are similar patients with my diagnoses. That's why I scheduled the appointment to begin with, so maybe she'll be more understanding. I would just like to get to the bottom of this, and it's $650 for the appointment, and I'm more than willing to use my savings to do that if it's in the best interest of my health, but I don't want to waste all of those resources and energy, I'll probably just end up doing the phone appointment. And as far as TPN, the pharmacist still is not back yet. I'm gonna have to wait until Monday. But that has been my week. I hope you all had a great week yourself, better than mine. I've just been super sick. And bye. You know. Yeah. You're changing your voice. What do you mean I'm drinking coffee? You're talking different than you were tonight.